last round. Fight! Hello and welcome to the Last Round Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Saunders. Joining me as always, my co-host, Anton Austin. We're here at Imperial Gym in Southport to speak to a guy who's had over 40 fights. He's fought against top UK competitors, top non-UK competitors. He's fought in Abu Dhabi, Paris, Thailand, Tenerife, Bolton. He's currently ranked number two at 66 <laughs> kilograms. Jack Kennedy, thanks for inviting us along. No problem. So as I said there, you fought in like a lot of different countries. How does fighting abroad compare to fighting in the UK where you've got your home fans with you and stuff? Um, I, I like fighting in England. Um, you know, you've always got that support of family, friends, which is good. Gives you a bit of a boost in the yeah. fights. But yes, yeah, traveling around, seeing the world, that's that's really what you want to be doing. Like, um, Yeah, really, you know, been lucky to fight in some really good places. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's what, what you what you do it for really yeah, isn't it? Yeah, to, course, to travel. Yeah. Where have you say the your, your favourite place that you fought in, do you think? Probably Abu Dhabi or Dubai. Yeah, it's just, yeah, just the quality up. there. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so you having watched your fights, your style seems quite um, adaptable based on who you're fighting. Like for instance when you fought Tommy McCormick, you fought completely different to how you fought against Brian Totty. Mm. I was wondering, is that something that you like actively pursue to you know have like quite an interchangeable style when you need it? Yeah, I think I think this day and age with Muay Thai, especially in England and stuff, like you can't be one dimensional. Like everyone's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, like people people could do everything these days. It wasn't like <coughs> ten years ago when I first started fighting, where like you could just punch or just do one thing and win a fight. All the top guys can do everything now. Yeah. You know, so you have to you have to be able to change. I think like I'm personally not excellent in any area of my Muay Thai I'm not the best puncher I've not got the power of like Liam Harrison I'm probably not as clever as Tommy um, you know equally as good or maybe worse in the clinch than Totty but like you've just got to be able to put it all together you know yeah, yeah I think that's a good that's, it's humble as you <coughs> to say that being able to change on the fly and yeah because you can't have like I've always said and I teach my fighters the same thing like if plan A doesn't work you want to be able to go plan B if plan B doesn't work you want to go plan C all the way through to Z you know yeah. if you can so like when you fought Brian Totty would you have like, did you know beforehand that he was going to be like that, wanting to come yeah, to yeah. fight with yeah. Totty I'll, I'll say like I made a bit of a mistake really with Totty we knew he was going to clinch it's his strength yeah. and um, I thought we thought like oh, we're not, I, said in the, I said in the change room before I fought I said I'm not going to clinch very much today probably kick move around on the back foot you know just spoil him look yeah. for elbows and then, uh, and then I got into the fight and I, I really enjoyed the clinch with him. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, this is really good. I haven't really fought many people with that good, that level of clinch, especially in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of got like sucked into that battle with him, you know, so <laughs> that was probably a fault on my part. Yeah. Did you, uh, you had Panikos in your corner for that fight, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, you had him against, when you fought on Muay Thai Grand Prix against the Thai. Yeah. I was wondering like how, how does he benefit your, like you and your, when you're fighting and he's in your corner? Panikos, obviously he's experienced the more experienced people you can have in your corner the better really you know yeah. he's been there done it he's fought like good ties as well which is some, something you can't always find with every coach yeah, yeah. Um, so that experience of like with the high level knowing when to nick rounds like we were talking about it before about nicking rounds when to go when to when to you know hold off it's important you know yeah. sometimes it's hard to read when you're actually fighting yourself yeah, you might think yeah. I remember when I watched that fight back against Jet Sarda I thought it was closer than it was I was like, yeah, this is close. I'm only like maybe just behind in the fifth round. And then when I actually watched the fight back, I, he, he'd done enough to win maybe three, four, and five quite yeah. quite convincingly. Um, so obviously you fought against the legend like Singdan. Mm. What's your mindset when you're going into a fight like that? Are you there like, you know, trying to knock him out, trying to beat him, or are you just uh, can you allow yourself to enjoy the fact that you're fighting a, like a legend of that caliber? Yeah. Um, it's it's just a good experience and all I learned a lot from that fight. One thing I learned about from that fight like is um I fight sometimes fighting too much their style. Like you're never gonna be and I was never gonna beat Singdam at his style, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Where sometimes like in the UK I can use that Thai style against yeah. like other UK fighters or even like foreign fighters that aren't Thai yeah. Yeah. and you, I can kind of do that to him, but I was never gonna beat him doing that style and I kinda that was a big learning point for me. I remember when I went to, went on to fight the next tie, I fought um, some child Chalam Chalam Pet. That was the Abu Dhabi fight actually. It was either one or two fights after that. I uh, you know I was really aggressive against him, trying to tire him out. And this is where like uh, 
it's like I'm adapting more of this like Moy Cow style these days. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the tires don't like it. No one likes it. You know, yeah, you yeah. tire someone out, <laughs> it makes it easy, it make, can make yeah, it easy yeah, for yeah. you, you know. Would you say you gain massive confidence after fighting Singh Dad by then going on to your next fights? You know, yeah, you went five um, rounds of him. And yeah, I realised that like they're all human. You know, I could hear him getting tired. I could hear him when I landed certain shots. It actually hurt him a little bit. You know what I mean? Where you think he's like some superhuman. <laughs> yeah. And you're not you're not going to be able to do anything yeah, yeah. against him. Same thing with his with his body kick and stuff. You know, he's meant to have one of the hardest right kicks in Thailand, and it was hard and it did hurt my arm and stuff. But it wasn't as hard as ever what you think it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. How did that fight come about then? It was, a, it was a pull out. It was a pull out. Um, I think Reese McAllister was meant to fight him. And I was meant to actually fight Brian Totti again. Yeah. And I, pulled, I pulled out on him again. <coughs> but I, yeah, I feel sorry for Brian. I <laughs> keep doing so. I apologise to him every time I see him. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I pulled out. I was meant to be fighting Brian, I think, on a show in Liverpool. And uh, Calder rang me up and said, Would you be interested? And I was like, Oh, you know, I might not get this chance again. And uh, Dar Darren, Darren understood, like, and. Um, Obviously, Darren being a fighter himself, you've got to take opportunities like yeah, that, haven't you? Yeah. Um, and that's how it came about. I took it on, I think, about a week and a half or two weeks' notice. Well, it's not long. Yeah. Not no, long no, no, no. But um, we're always fight ready, like, to a degree. So um, I wasn't, and I was already training to fight Brian anyway. Yeah. So um, I was, wasn't, like, unfit or anything. Yeah. Was that, is that the fact that you'd say that you were most proud of, or perhaps maybe a different one? I don't know if people have asked this to me before, like what what's my favourite fight, or I've not really got one particularly favourite fight. Uh, Sing Dam was a good name for me to fight, obviously, but it it wasn't a massively hard physically fight. It was hard like more mentally, yeah, yeah. like getting over it. I said like I didn't really get into the fight until like the fourth round, and I had like a bit of advice off Panikos in the corner, and it kind of changed my mentality. And it that kind of like oh he is human, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, yeah, it gave me you know it gave me confidence fighting him, but. Um, I lost my train of thought then. What, what was the question again? <laughs> what fight you're most proud of? Oh, proud of, yeah. I don't know. I've got different fights. Um, some of the ones in Abu Dhabi, you know, a good win. I had a good win against that Somchai when, you know, my own team there at on Penong. Because we were both Sitsun Penong. I was Paquette and fighting against the Bangkok one. Uh, he said, like, you know, his trainer said he's guaranteed to knock me out and stuff <laughs> and all that. And I was like, oh, no. And he was powerful. Yeah. So I was, like, a bit scared. And then I managed to stop him. So... You know, different things. Even like Jeremy Payet. Yeah, that I was a good. Him. That yeah. was a good fight for me because Sin he fought Sing Dam before he fought me, and he, he had a you know he nearly KO'd Sing Dam and then got stopped. Uh, you know, I was proud of that fight. The fact that I took some big punishment off him and managed to still pull the win out. So loads of different fights. You know, not was not it like there fighting in was it in Paris? In yeah, Muay Thai Grand Prix. What was that like? Good then? experience. Yeah, yeah, really good. The riots were on. And, do you remember the riots? They were on at the same time. There was loads of. People oh. rioting there when we were there. <laughs> I think it caused trouble with every country I visit, mean, you know. Yeah. What I mean? You were saying that <laughs> when you fought in Italy, that that's when all that, the coronavirus yeah, yeah. really started. Then. Yeah, it's my fault, I think. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe the Imperial style? Is he a particular, I always ask fighters this, is he a particular like, style like you talked about, obviously, uh, like a Moy Cow style? You, mm -hmm. you know, you're adopting that in some of your fights now, it's more aggressive moving forward yeah, so yeah. would you would you say Imperial's got a style or, or do you, again would you say everyone's kind of different to the so like the way I try and teach fighters is I don't really try and teach people or even myself really like when I'm training I don't particularly teach them one style yeah I like, they'll have one style which suits their body type yeah so like I'm not going to teach a big tall fighter to be a power puncher mm. I'm not going to teach a little short or shorter stockier fighter to try and be a clinch fighter mm. it's not going to suit them but yeah. I would I like to make sure they know how to do it yeah. back through that like A to Z of game plans some people like even if you're a shorter fighter you might need to go clinch them Yeah. even if you're a, you know a taller fighter you might have to punch sometimes yeah, so it's yeah. like that like I like to think we have probably we have probably got a particular style we are more traditional than, than some gyms yeah. but I like my fights to try and be able to do everything yeah. and then you can change on the fly then yeah so you've not fought the UK number one well is the UK number one or the world number one, Charlie Peters? Like UK, number UK number one, number one Charlie Peters. Yeah. Is that a fight that you would be interested in? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's y everyone's after that number one spot, aren't they? You, you, you're the top guy, everyone wants a piece. So, yeah, of course I would, yeah. Definitely. That would be a good fight, that. Definitely, yeah, for the UK. So, I wanted to talk about your injury a little bit, if you didn't mind. The one yeah, you posted yeah. on Instagram the uh, other yeah. day. Yeah. I thought this might come up. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, it's, it's like a dangerous and potentially life changing injury. Yeah. How did how did you find out that you that it happened to you? How did you find out that you is it a ruptured spleen that you yeah, had? Yeah, 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 ruptured. How, how did it come about? 
well, I passed out after the fight. <laughs> that was kind of the first. So you didn't have no... No, no, well, I thought... I, s- I read that you was you feeling a little bit ill, weren't you? Yeah. Was it prior to the fight? I, oh, when, yeah, yeah. Before the fight, I was I was sick. Right. Um, I had a lot of, like, facial swelling and stuff, and I was I just started a new job, and I was getting, like, sent home, and I'd had a few pull... I think I'd ex- I've explained a lot of this, but, like, I've had a few pull-outs on the run-up to the fight. Right. So I did, like, a really extended camp, you yeah. know, like, I had, like, one week off here, but then I was, like, back into a camp, and then I had another pull-out, and it, about two or three shows fell through. And it came round. I wanted to fight before we got to the the show in Southport. You see, right? Uh, and it didn't didn't happen. Uh, I was sick, uh, and I, I think a lad. It was Luke Bennett actually. Right. I, I didn't think I mentioned it in the post, but it was Luke Bennett. I thought, and uh, one of Alex Foreman's lads. He took the fight like fairly short notice, probably about two weeks or something. Yeah. And uh, I really wanted to fight. I was sick. I just like. Yeah, I'll still fight. I'll still fight. Mm. And you can see I've got the weighing pictures and stuff. You can see I like pro- you're drawn in anyway on yeah. a weighing day, aren't you? But I'm like yeah. ghostly white. I know I'm pretty pale anyway, like. <laughs> yeah. But I was proper ghostly white. Uh, just went through with it for, and I just he caught me with a kick in. I think it was the first round, and it just really winded me. Mm. And it wasn't like a big kick. I've watched it back, and I've been looking at the video, and I've been like, I can't really see where I got hit, but it must have been that kick. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just felt like I got winded badly. He tried to like jump on me to stop me and got saved by the bell. Um, and I managed to turn the fight around and get hold of him and knee him a bit. And I think Alex threw the towel in round three. Right. And then I just like felt like, you know, just felt like sore. And um, sat around, watched the show. And I was on the way home. I just like passed out with no walking home, which is only, we're only about a mile away from the Prince of Wales, you see. Right. Um, passed out, ambulance jumped in, I was fine, I felt all right, I just kept being sick, um, got to the hospital, stuck me in like a bed for a couple of hours, I think it was about two hours, and the nurses, like, because I'd been fighting and stuff, I think they didn't really, not believe I was as badly injured as yeah. I was, but like, they just didn't give me as much attention, yeah. and they just said, yeah, it'll be all right, yeah. he's been fighting, the dickhead, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and yeah, my heart rate was going up and down and I kept throwing up and then my heart rate spiked and then it just flatlined. So um must have got rushed next door. And I woke up after they must have defibbed me, you know, to wake me up. Mm. And I had like probably about eight or 10 people around me all like putting needles in me and stuff. And I, I can remember it all quite clearly. Um, and then, yeah, they just rushed me through to emergency surgery. I was think I was quite lucky. There was a doctor there who wasn't normally on emergent, the emergency surgery. Uh, uh, what is it called? EA. What? A&E. At A&E. Yeah. A&E. And um, he'd seen the injury before in a car crash and rugby accidents and stuff. And oh. he did the ultrasound on my stomach. And that's what kind of like, he, oh no, I know what it yeah, is. It's like just the top here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, It's like under your, under your rib here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I was quite lucky really. And then he just really lucky. Yeah. cut me open and then managed to repair it. Normally they like... Um, just whip it out straight away and you have to be on your antibiotics for the rest of your life so yeah I was lucky yeah very lucky how did the injury kind of change your mentality towards fighting when, when you were back fit again when you just straight into the gym again ready to fight or yeah I was to be honest it made me hungry because I like I didn't want to end my career on that as well you know yeah. and, like family and stuff were dead worried and I was like no I can't you know I can't let this be the end of it yeah. and I've only just started it was only like my it was my first C-class bout, so right. it's my, it was in total, it was my <coughs> fourth fight, I think. I'd done three in shin pads before that. Mm. Um, yeah, so I was like, this can't be the end, you know, I've got to go go through. And um, I think like it helped me recover that because what happened was like, I like, had it marked on a calendar. I can go back to, not even like, the, they said I couldn't go back to the, the Thai gym for like months, but oh, you can go back and do some like, light exercise and I had like a membership to the DW so I went back and did like a little bit of bench press yeah, on, on yeah, you know on the machines yeah, nothing free yeah, weights yeah because I went super yeah, I'm skinny you man. Lost, lost a lot of weight uh, I went I think it was like 58 or 57 I couldn't eat or anything for for ages I was only saying something I didn't I didn't go to the toilet for like 12 days or something Joe because they took everything out yeah, yeah, yeah just nothing worked and it was just oh. like throwing up it was horrible the, the the recovery was much worse than the injury to be honest yeah you uh, think the weight cut had an impact on it? Could have done, yeah. Because obviously, yeah. you know, your body's weak after weight. That's when you're more prone to get Definitely. ill. I was fighting. I was. Fi- I think I f- took the fight at 64 kilos, but I was much closer to my weight. Right. Um, I think it was just the sickness, but it could have been from 
the fact it was an extended fight camp yeah. and you know, be training a long time and training really hard. Uh, didn't know when I was fighting and I would just run my body down yeah. and just maybe caught like a little virus or something like that. I think mm. that's the worst thing you can get, isn't it? Even just a normal flu, like yeah. weeks before a fight, just an system. option. It's not, not good. You <laughs> feel sometimes, like that last week, you feel ill before. Yeah. You know, I can feel ill and I'm not even sick. I'm just weak and drained, yeah. and especially that like last yeah. four or five days. Um, so it could have been a new, you know, a couple of things. I can't yeah. pinpoint it. Still, to this day, don't really know what it is. Can't pinpoint it on one thing. Oh, I did this, or I got sick here. Did you have any sort of fears going into fights? Obviously, your first fight back after that. Yeah, you definitely, definitely. Getting I, kicked on it, and you know. Yeah, st- I fought like in. That. I fought in London on a, a KO KO show, and I fought a guy from the KO gym, and it was. I remember watching. It was at the uh, your call and Bethnal Green. Right. We drove down and did the same day weighing. So I dieted really hard again up, up on the run up to the sh- up, run up on yeah. to the uh, the show, mm. and I fought a little bit heavier. And I was like, oh, you know, oh, I hope I'm going to be all right. And I think the nerves, I like actually had pain where it was. So you know, like, <laughs> as I was in the back, I was like warming up. And I was yeah. like, it's hurting. Why is it hurting? <laughs> but I think it's just nerves, you know. Do you think it's getting in your own head a bit? Definitely, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And I, w- I thought that was like a good turning point for my for my fights as well because. I fought clever, mm. where normally, especially like the first maybe ten fights, I was really aggressive mm. with a lot of, especially early doors. I had a few like good KOs early, so I just thought I was like yeah. indestructible, yeah, you know, yeah, going yeah. forward. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I fought clever and it worked out really well for me. I didn't really take much damage in that fight. So was everyone the whole obviously you know was still rarely new fighter? Did nobody at all know about this injury? Is it literally just? Well, obviously, well, as in the Muay Thai community in the UK, no, no, I kept no, it quiet. Kept it really, quiet. I didn't really want, like my close friends and stuff did, mm. and people in the gym and my trainers and stuff. But I didn't really want to tell too many people. I was a little bit maybe like embarrassed about it, really, as mm. well, especially at first. Um, I didn't really want people to know, and also the, in your head as well, you think, oh, you know, you're weak to the body. Yeah. People might try and target that, yeah. and you know. So I didn't tell anyone, and obviously, it's not trouble. I've not, not had any trouble with it. Mm. I've taken taken big. I think shots. it's a good. It's a good. Very good story for even younger fighters and stuff yeah. like that. You could go, you know, ob- hopefully not fingers crossed, but a similar experience, you know, and you're yeah. now fighting at the top level and you've overcome it. And mentally, you must have grown a lot through that experience. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just it's just one of them things. I always say, like, with Muay Thai, like, you, it's it's a hard sport, and mm. it's probably one of the hardest in the world in terms of your body. Yeah. You're going to get injured. Like it's good things. Like when I first started fighting, I'd said to myself, "Well, I'm gonna break bones, <laughs> I'm gonna break my nose. Mm. You know, I'm gonna probably get KO'd. Yeah. You just come to terms with it." And it's when people, I think people think they're not. That's not gonna happen yeah. to them. And then when it does, it's a big surprise. Yeah. Where I kind of like I'd already come to terms with, I'm gonna get injured badly. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna get KO'd. It's it's gonna happen eventually, especially yeah. if I want to stay in it for the for the long term. Yeah. So Anton asked you briefly there about weight cutting. I was wondering, obviously you fight at 66. How much weight? On average, do you have to lose when you're fighting at that weight? It varies. I can make. Have you fought l- lighter than 66? 63? Yeah, yeah, 63. Yeah, I fought yeah. 63 a couple of times. I don't yeah. like making 63 unless <laughs> I have to. Or it's a good fight, or, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, usually if it's a good fight or the money is good or there's something on the line, I'll make 63. But I don't particularly enjoy making 63. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, <coughs> 65, 66, a mm. little bit more comfortable. It's not nice, like, but it's, it's more comfortable. I try to keep my weight down um, in between camps. I try and stay active as much as I can, and that helps me keep my weight down. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I usually walk around my weight roughly in between about top end 73, 74. Try and walk around about 71, 70 kilos, fight 65. Right, so you're not going to have much mm. to cut No, no. I, I'll, I won't, that, that way I can enjoy fighting as well. I think like people, people who don't fight often, they'll balloon up weight. And then you've got to spend eight weeks of a camp dieting super hard. You yeah. hate your training. Yeah, yeah. You know you don't want to train. You feel weak during your training. Yeah. And then you cut all this weight and you fight. Well, that's the reason why you only fight two, three times a year because it's hard work. Mm-hmm. Where if I fight frequently, I feel like I'm training all the time. I keep my weight down. I can actually eat a bit of crap. And that's the only thing with 63. I have to be strict to make yeah, that weight. Yeah. Where 65, I don't have to be as strict as long as I'm training. <laughs> training it makes me laugh because I, I can relate to that. Yeah, Just a couple can. kilos, you can you can relax a little bit more on your diet, but yeah. then when it's a bit lower, you think, nah, I need to be. It's that last strict. that last kilo or two kilos that's the hardest, isn't it? Yeah. You know, everyone everyone who fights knows that. Yeah. Do you think 63 is the lowest that you would go to? Yeah, without like 
you know what I'm saying? I've always toyed with the idea of doing 61. Always, but I say that now and I'm like, yeah, 61, but then doing yeah. it's another thing. Like <laughs> pushing it, yeah. Definitely, yeah, because I'm pushing it at 63. So, but, who knows? 12 weeks camp, maybe dieting, yeah. maybe. But I wouldn't make, I couldn't compete 61 all the time. I, I can barely compete at 63 all the time. Um, I'd like to maybe try it, but I'm getting older now, so <laughs> mm. don't know. So currently at Imperial, you're the main fighter and also you're a coach here. I was wondering if there's like any added pressure, you know, with like your fighters looking up to you and stuff like that. You know, yeah. you're kind of molding their career. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 difficult. There's there's pros and cons to it. Obviously, when I was just lucky, when I was just working and then looking after myself and stuff, I didn't have to think about anyone else. Yeah. Uh, just focus on my training. Uh, wasn't running the gym. I had some you know people above me. Matt Thomas was doing all behind the scenes and all that, taking me to shows, taking me to weigh-ins and stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't, you know, it was easier in a way, but it's easier now in a way because I've got more time to train, but I've got to look after other lads as well, yeah. you see. Mm. Yeah, I enjoy it. I couldn't see myself doing anything else now. Like, Do you think if like, you were to fight on, say, a Yakko show and one of your fighters were to fight on it, do you think that would be problematic for you? Or do you think you'd yeah, it's right? happened two or three times before already, yeah. It's, it's difficult. This is why people like Panacos have got other people around me that'll come and help me, you know what I mean? It's just really important. Um, yeah, it, it, that's the hard part of it. You know, I've got to get people to train with other people and stuff so yeah. that they have confidence in other people in the corner as well. Obviously, yeah. I'll always try and jump in, but there's shows where I've had like Jack Maguire and stuff and he fights on the main card and you know I've been on myself and yeah. that's, it's difficult. Yeah, because yeah, I, I remember you saying that you fought on the same card that Paul fought against yeah, a few times. The Superbank card, wasn't it? Yeah, when you Superbank, fought, yeah. Um, what's his name? Stable. Stable, Stable that's yeah. Sure, Stable, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it, is, it is challenging, especially as a coach, you know. You know Obviously, as a fighter, you're, did, you want your coach there as well, do you know what I mean? Did, you, did Paul corner for you as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, his hands wrapped yeah, yeah, in the I'm corner, but thing, yeah. it's difficult. I even feel difficult for him, yeah, you know, yeah. he's got a huge fight and stuff like that, but... Got to be done, it? Yeah, you want your coach there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen me in the corner, like I go, I'm, I'm mental, you know, <laughs> I'm throwing my hands yeah. up, <laughs> slapping the fighters, you know, come on. <laughs> so I probably, I can understand, like, it probably it takes a lot of energy as does, well. Yeah, you yeah. Know, mentally. Like emotionally energy, yeah. you know, I'm, inve I'm invested heavily in the in yeah. the fight for your fighters. So it is, diff that's a difficult part of it, but it doesn't happen super frequently, you know what I mean? Mm. So what's your views on the current Muay Thai scene then? Do you think the f level of fight has improved a lot over the last few years? Massively, massively. The, as I said to you guys before, the difference between when I was fighting NNC class compared to the NNC class lads now is like unbelievable. Yeah. I've got lads in the gym that are working on stuff who are like inter club level or like one or two fights that I wasn't even thinking about till I've had like 15 fights, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's, it's, it's brilliant, the juniors are amazing. The lower level lads are amazing. You can see like fighters rising through now that are just killing people, you know. Yeah. Um, it's quality. Yeah, it's really good. Um, my next question would be about sponsorships, really. Like, do you find it hard for people in the Muay Thai scene to get sponsorships for their fights and stuff like that and for the camps? Yeah, it's it's more difficult than say boxing or MMA, yeah. for example. But this I think is that's where because of the spotlight is not on it as much as it is. Yeah, it? yeah, it's not as it's not as. Um, publicly available sport is it you know it's a bit of a minority yeah. um, even though it's growing all the time it is definitely not as big as boxing or MMA and yeah. it, it's, it's gonna, probably going to be quite a long way off before it is um, so there the fighters are getting less less attention so then there's less reason for people to want to sponsor them you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. that's like it's important especially for fighters these days and I know a lot of people like laugh and joke about it but you've got to build like you you've got to try and build your your fighter profile up and yeah. this is why I was saying to you guys well stuff like this is brilliant for especially mm -hmm. younger fighters coming through to see like oh yeah you know you don't just get given opportunities you've got to kind of you know I'm here look at me I'm here oh I'll fight him I'll do that yeah. and then people think oh well yeah that might not be a bad fight then yeah. rather than just being a, you know the guy in the background yeah. fight and hope stuff comes to you yeah. it might do but it, you know it's not always going to yeah obviously mm -hmm. as well with these like fight companies like Yakko and Muay Thai Grand Prix if you're kind of like a, a low level card fighter, you know, you're going to be getting a certain amount of money every time. But then if you know if you can build up your profile, it's like, you, you know, what I mean, you can start demanding more. Cause obviously, it is a dangerous sport. Yeah. Taking Tickets a lot of risks. Stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Like I've never been. It's the money's never, never been a thing where it's like, oh, 
I'm not fighting unless I get this much. Yeah, I know yeah. fighters like that, but same thing again. You fight two or three times. If you if you want to do it for the money, then the money might only be there a couple of times a year. Yeah. Or where I'm, you know, I've only had like 40 fights can be like considered a bit experienced, but like I don't feel experienced yet. So I want to fight as frequently as I can. And plus, time's ticking. I don't want to be on these fights. I started late. Yeah. I only started Muay Thai like just before I was 20, 19, 20. That was late to me. You know, some of these kids these days are doing eight years old. Yeah. They've had 50 fights by the time they're 12, you know, especially in the yeah. UK. And in Thailand, it's even more, you know. Yeah. So, like, I would just want to fight as much as I can. So, you do take sometimes, you're not going to get paid as well. But if I fight six times, eight times in a year, I'm still going to earn more money than I would. Yeah. yeah. Just sat there if complaining. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think like when we spoke to Tommy McCormick, he even he he said like he's had fights where he took like two hundred pounds. I think it was against Alex Bublich because he want, he needed a fight. So yeah, he just yeah. took two hundred pounds. He's a fighter, isn't he? Yeah. He's had a lot of fights, you know. You know, he's he thing with Tommy like he he's fought a lot. Um, he just sometimes you just do want to fight. You just get in there, fight. It's yeah. not always about money. If it becomes about the money, you may as well do what a lot of lads are doing. They go into MMA because it it will be the money's getting better, but it will be another five years but I think before yeah. you start seeing more money coming into the sport more yeah. frequently I think you know. maybe like make a TV deal or even like you know how Muay Thai Grand Prix fought on UFC Fight Pass mm. I think that's like could potentially you know build the fighters quite yeah, a bit yeah definitely have you ever thought about transitioning over to yeah. MMA or anything like that or? I like the I like the the Jiu Jitsu yeah. I've done a bit of the Jiu Jitsu I actually did Jiu Jitsu like a Japanese style Jiu Jitsu excuse me yeah. before I even started Muay Thai I did a bit of MMA before I started Muay Thai um, I like that, but I don't like the striking you style. Fought a few times in the MMA gloves. In the little gloves, yeah, yeah, yeah but two or three times. Um, How did you find that? The, the thing that I thought, especially like MX and stuff, it's it's Muay Thai with small gloves, yeah. where MMA isn't Muay Thai, yeah, is it? No. Like the style's completely different. They jump in and out, and I don't particularly like the stand up in MMA um, as much as I like the stand up in Muay Thai. Like the they, w- they move away, don't they? Yeah, Muay Thai's a bit more stationary. Yeah. They rely on defence and stuff. It doesn't suit me. And plus, like, if I was to do it, I'm just going to get it taken down, aren't I? And yeah. the jiu-jitsu is never going to be that good. <laughs> yeah. Especially if I've only started it, like, done bits and bobs. I think that's a problem with a lot of, um, like, UK-based mo- MMA fighters, though. But, say, in America, you know, these kids, they're in high school, they're fighting in, like, wrestling tournaments yeah. throughout high school, college. Yeah. And we're coming over, like, as mainly strikers, like... Mm. They are going to get found out a lot of times. Definitely, yeah. Mm. yeah, you just, they're not going to, it's exactly the same as the A to, a to Z game plans, isn't it? They yeah. know you're going to be good on your feet, take them down. Yeah. You're not going to be as good there. Spoke know? to a few MMA fighters as well, haven't we? And we've talked about even just the technique of kicking. They're not, they say, you know, we're not necessarily going to turn our hip too much. Yeah. And we're going to kind of pull our kicks a little bit because they're, you know, they're afraid of the takedown. Get caught, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah. The way, you know striking the part. I like watching MMA. I just don't I think t- it's too old man to be to be fighting in it, I think. Mm. I know a lot of the lads are older, but like you said then, they're old the lads are fighting, but they've been champion wrestlers when they were like yeah. young kids. Yeah. They've had, you know, and that's important. I think it's better to do it the other way around than to do it Muay Thai, yeah, Jiu Jitsu or yeah. the wrestling way. Mm. You need to have like a stable or a strong foundation in wrestling or jujitsu and then add striking. I think striking's slightly easier to learn than the than the wrestling. Once the you know the wrestling takes a longer time to learn and the jujitsu especially longer time to learn, and then you can pick be, you can be all right with striking yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah. You know anyone yeah. can you know some drunk guy on the street can throw a punch, yeah. can't they? And sometimes like the striking level in MMA isn't particularly that good. Yeah. Only a few of them are starting to like really shine shine through on yeah. is Israel Alizan yeah, yeah. yeah, never glanced yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's quality, quality striker yeah, isn't he and like McGregor was a good striker yeah, really good, yeah. but you know I wouldn't like to see them in a Muay Thai fight with a good Muay Thai fighter no. mm. it's funny as well because you, like we were saying about them with wrestling you've got like I remember when um, Brock Lesnar fought Mark Hunt Mark Hunt is obviously um, yeah, a glory like, yeah, you know, in glory yeah, in K1 dynamite in his yeah, hands dynamite right hand but Brock Lesnar just picked him up and threw him down lay on him for three rounds won the fight yeah and, and he obviously yeah. Brock Lesnar was like a champion re- wrestler Alistair Overeem there's quite there's yeah, Go yeah. Hanzaki there's a good few kickboxers who've gone well, not as Muay Thai but Dutch style kickboxers yeah, who've yeah. gone into the yeah, UFC when, like, <laughs> you fight a guy like Brock Lesnar you get you know taken down sat on you for three rounds he wins the fight yeah right? yeah. yeah it's it's it's, it's difficult isn't it because it, 
as a fighter, you want to win fights, but yeah. it's not always the most interesting fight to, to watch that. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, if, if you get ten, an extra 10 grand for winning the fight, yeah. I'm going to lay on top of you, aren't I? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I'm not going to strike with you. Yeah. Cause, I mean, we spoke to him about Diedrich as well, and he fights in glory now, and he says they've got that thing where if you win the fight, you know, you get a bonus. Do you think that is something that's missing in MMA, the kind of... Muay Thai. Sorry, yeah. yeah. In, in Muay Thai, you know, the hunger to 100% want to win because you're getting this, like, a grand bonus if you win. Yeah, I've d- I fought in... Um, when I fought in Dubai, it was it was the, my purse again to win in to win by KO. You know what I mean? Right. So like that's ex- that's good. Yeah, you know, you're getting like ten grand Massive if you win by KO. It's yeah. ridiculous. So like everyone's trying to kill each other. Even a lot of like MX and stuff and Max Muay Thai, they do that like super bonus. Like you ever the stitches and stuff. Like yeah, that. The yeah, the stitch <laughs> bonus. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's yeah. Mental that. Yeah. Is it five hundred baht every? I stitch? don't even know. Yeah, he said something like a tenner or something. Yeah, it's like ten, twelve pound <laughs> every yeah. time every stitch they get. Yeah. Have you fought on Max? I've not fought on Max, no. I've fought MX, I've done Super Muay Thai, I've fought in a few of the stadiums and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's it's good in a way and it's bad in a way because it's it's three rounds, mm. which I don't really like particularly, but... That's only the next question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't particularly like the three rounds, right. but it might bring more of that general public into it. It's a little bit easier un- to understand the three rounds yeah, as well yeah. from the scoring. It's more high octane as well. High, yeah, yeah, you've got to go... Um, why they, you know, why they only stood there dancing, teeping their legs in the first two rounds, mm. which I understand why they do it, and I do it myself, but the general public were on about bringing the profile of the sport up and stuff, like yeah. MMA. Yeah. They don't want to watch that, no. same as way they don't want to watch two people lying on top of each other, mm. same as way mm. they might not want to watch or appreciate like a fight like me and Brian had with the clinch. Yeah, yeah mm. or we don't want to watch, they're only just hugging each other, <laughs> but someone who'd like... Yeah, a problem my type of yours will appreciate the level appreciate of the clinch. Yeah. You've got someone who's had, you know, five pints at the bar and yeah. just come to watch you he's probably kissing each other yeah, yeah. what yeah. they're doing it's I couldn't show my like some people will appreciate that fight in the sport of Muay Thai but I couldn't show my family that fight with Brian Totty yeah. they'd be bored out their heads yeah. wouldn't they yeah. mm. so you, it's you've got to sometimes go take risks be more exciting you've got to sometimes win, just win fights yeah. what's your views on it's an interesting one as well Asha obviously at the minute you've got UFC you've got Fire Island you've got no crowd do you, have you ever been influenced by the crowd to like, you know, in Muay Thai, you know, if you're at Yaka, you've got this fight with Totti, you yeah, see yeah. fighting again and the crowd go for it. Yeah, you yeah, know, Can you ever imagine a Muay Thai fight like that, you know? With like, no crowd? Yeah. yeah, have you ever heard it? Obviously you've heard a Muay Thai crowd before, Yeah, yeah, they? it's mental. Oh, wee, oh, wee, making yeah. look, and especially I couldn't, I couldn't be the only person in the corner um, with no crowd shouting on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. They think, who's this in the corner? I make loads of noise, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the crowd definitely do G you up. Yeah. Um it's mad. I've watched I watched think who did I watch that um Gaethje. Yeah, yeah, Gaethje. Was yeah. it against Ferg- Ferguson? Ferguson, yeah. yeah. And five. you can hear the corners perfectly. Yeah. You know, maybe if it'd just be a different experience, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked you before about sponsors. Do you have sponsors that help you prepare for fights, you know, like your meal prep and stuff like that? I've not got any like food sponsors. I've, I've really want a food sponsor. If you're out there, yeah, yeah, you're out there. <laughs> I'm really hungry over here. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I've got like Tanko. I'm sponsored by like a tattoo company, which nice. is not necessarily going to help with fights, yeah. but like makes you look cool, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a few different sponsors and stuff, but. Uh, people that help out with like my strength and conditioning. I've got like a good good team around me, so um, they're important when you you know every little bit of help you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Fight yeah. camp is important. So, Wicked. is there anything else you'd like to add before we finish? Anything you'd like to shout out? Um, not. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Social media, your Instagram. Um, yeah, I follow me on Instagram. I try and put like a lot of um, posts out at the moment. Like say we're talking about raising <laughs> profile. I'm trying like put little things up a lot of fighters are doing obviously with the lockdown like trying to give their two cents on the sport mm. I think that's important like you're yeah. saying about the younger fighters so yeah. follow me on Instagram I'm JMK Imperial follow the uh, Imperial Gym which is I think it's Imperial Muay Thai yeah. um, on Facebook Instagram um, yeah anything like that anything that helps you know and you're hoping to fight touch wood before the end of the year as soon as possible as many fights as I can before yeah, the end of the year hit him up yeah, yeah I'm always always ready to fight maybe 61 kilos <laughs> no not, not after <laughs> lockdown yeah 71 more likely <laughs> yeah. thank you for having us down thanks very much thank you for watching Cheers, we'll see you again soon <laughs>